Funding for Love to Paint with Mimi was provided by Agnes Gund. Utrecht Art Supplies, celebrating 60 years. And by Kelly and Robert Day. Additional funding was provided by the following. Hi, I'm Mimi. Today we're going to talk about composition and we're going to paint a picture in Spain of this wonderful C-curve road heading up to a church. So grab your paints and brushes and let's get started. Ready, set, go. Here we go. Paint on paper. This is what creation is about. Woo, isn't that beautiful? This is the beach. Look at that green against that yellow. I mean, it just sings. We're dancing with this color. It's going across the page. I'm a shape maker. That's what artists do. They make shapes, they create color, they do all these incredible things. Oh, I love to paint. Hi, today we're talking about composition. And composition is a way to direct the eye in or through the painting. And every artist can benefit by learning some of these rules. You can use the rules or not use them, but it's good to know them. So today we're talking to Shustin Zetmar from Newport, Rhode Island, originally from Sweden. She's lived half of her life in this country, and she does a beautiful and very unusual form of art. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us about how you made this? Well, this is what I call a fiber piece. The way I did this was uh, stretching a piece of wool fabric around stretcher frames. And then instead of doing a brush stroke, like in a painting, I've just done a stitch instead. In this image here that I call Nantucket Walk, I've used the C curve as a focal point for composition. And if you follow here, it's, it's kind of like the letter C coming in here, going around like that. And it, it draws the whole picture together in one motion. It brings your eye up here to the horizon where the moon is reflecting and then kind of coming back down this way. And can you tell us also about the rule of thirds in your division in the, can in the canvas? Well, what I learned in art school was to never cut every anything in half. Um, it gets a very boring uh, impression and also um, your eye gets confused as where to go. So in this particular image, I opted to have the horizon really high up, kind of the rule of third, not exactly, but it felt good to put it right there rather than here, for instance. It would have made it much less dramatic. Great, that's good, good description. And let's take a look at another work of art. This is beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's called Coming Together, and it was originally a commission piece, actually, for a global congress. So what I tried to say here was all of us coming together from different parts of the world, moving towards the light. So it's, a, it's an image for, about unity for me. And how do you use the S composition here? Well, it's not terribly obvious, but there is an S in here. Sometimes you don't have to make it like you know, a caricature of a letter. But there is an S going like this that brings the eye in. And I don't know about you, but when I do S's, when I write by hand, I often do like a little curly cue at the end of it. And this turned into a spiral, bringing the eye right to the center of the painting. Wonderful. So let's take a look at the next one. This one I call the path. And there's a path kind of leading behind a corner. You're not sure what's coming next, which is often true in life. And I used kind of a backwards Z here. Um, in order to add a little drama to the piece, I put this angle in here. So here's the horizon, and then there's this angle, and then here's the, the step off, so to speak. So it's not always that I think out these things like, oh, I should use a Z curve or anything like that. It's more um, when I run into troubles, uh, something doesn't quite work in an image, that's when I pull out the rules that I have in the back of my head to see why is this not working. Oh, I see, I need more of this line here to bring it together. 
So that's how I work. I work very intuitively, usually. And what motivates you to do art? Well, I basically have to do art uh, in order to feel fully alive, to feel part of the world. It's a way for me to connect within myself. Um, I've done it since I was a kid. I was one of these uh, little kids that had asthma and had to stay still, so art was something I could do. And doing it, I lost track of time and I found great large worlds to play around with. So I just never really stopped doing art. I was one of these people that never grew up in that sense. And it connects me with me, with others, and with something greater than myself. Beautiful. But Picasso said something like, we spend all of our lives, as we get older, trying to go back to our childhoods. And it sounds like you never lost your childhood. I never left. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's go back to the studio. Today we're going to create a painting using the rule of thirds and the C curve to make a really exciting, dynamic, inviting painting. And we're working in acrylic paint today and we're using a stretched canvas and it's 18 by 24 inches. And the colors we're using today are going to be burnt umber, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, cambium red light, yellow okra, cambium yellow, and of course white. And the brushes we're going to be using today are, this is a number 12 round, and my little T-square, A little rigger, I think it's a six. A two inch flat, the workhorse. An eight inch flat. And finally, this wonderful 12 inch flat. Now I'm going to put the brushes over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just decide where I'm going to have this C curve and this little church. And we're using a rule of thirds, so I'm thinking about a third of the way across the canvas. And this is going to be probably the little church right there. And this is going to be part of the C curve, and then this is the other part coming down here, all the way down and coming this way. And this is my C curve. I'm also going to take my little ruler, and I love my T-square, because it makes me know that everything's gonna be straight. And sometimes I make things a little crooked, so I've been using this a lot lately. So I'm gonna take it right here, and I'm just gonna run a line down through what will be the middle of this church. And that's about all I really am going to do until I start to put my lay-in in. And what we do here is I use my wonderful two-inch flat brush that I love because I can work very, very quickly with it. And I'm using water here. And I'm going to use a little white and just a touch of, I think I want to use a warm color, so I'll use just a touch of that red. And I'm going to make, oh, that's a little too wet. You know, in painting it's either too wet, too dry, too hot, too cold. We're always adjusting. And there's really not a right or a wrong, which makes things really fun because we can adjust and change. And you know, the wonderful thing about art is there's a different way Every single person would do art. There's no right or wrong, but we have some suggestions or some rules that help us out. One is don't put the, your center of interest right in the middle of the painting. You pick a nice spot for it that will be a little bit off center and interesting. Now, we've got those are gonna be wonderful clouds in there. And we have one cloud that's going right straight across the church. And now it was a beautiful day. 
It was in Spain, southern Spain, and I walked up into the hills, and there was this incredible church. It was a bright, bright, blue, sunny day, so we're going to put this wonderful, wonderful blue sky in there. And I'm also directing the energy into this church. And so you can see this cloud is going in. Now, you know, that blue, I think I want to touch more green to it. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and see what happens. Oops, too much yellow. So that's going to be much too much. We don't want that in the sky. So I'm getting some of that out of there and going back into the cerulean. See that yellow? I don't really like it, but we want a little variation in color. So the yellow is actually pretty good up there. I'm not going to be too fussy. I just want to get the paint down. And as you know, I love to put paint down. It's one of the most exciting things in the world for me is to put paint on paper, on canvas, on cloth. I don't really care, but I love to put the paint down. OK, now we want to also think about shape. And you know, this is kind of a blah shape, this round thing. So I'm thinking, how can I make that a little better shape? Because you know, as artists, we're shape makers. We make nice shapes. And I'm going to pull this down here. And that still is a blah shape. So I'm thinking, well, how am I going to change that shape a little bit? And I don't want it to be a round shape. So I'm going to go back and make a little cloud here. You see how the shape is changing a bit? And I'm also going to put in a little blue there because I don't want the eye to go out of the picture over there. And it's always fun when we get going here. And this cloud, these clouds are, it looks like a little bit of turbulence up there. So I'm going to just go over it a bit. And uh, we, we can come back to this area in a bit. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to start putting this road in. And the, this is your C, and it's called a hook or the C curve. And we're going to pull people's eye, boom, right up here, right up into the, the church. And I'm also going to wait for this to dry a little bit before I go in there and do the church. So we're going to now make this C curve going up into the church, and it's going to draw your eye up. It's like, a, it's like a hook. Some people call it a hook. So first of all, we're going to take a little of this color here, and I'm making this swooping movement of this road going up. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> This is so exciting. I had no idea that color was going to show up there. It's so thick. So we're going to have this go down this way. And we're having it go this way. And I think what I want to use is just a touch of this other color here going down. And I'm going to put a little white in here. And we want this feeling to go right up to the church. And you know roads, how they're sometimes in the middle of the road, it gets a different color. And, but the main thing is I need to get in and get out of this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of this and just pull it out. Now, I'm always, you know, I'm an innovator. I'm always using something different, whatever strikes my intuition. I don't really have a formula, but I'm thinking we need it a little tiny bit darker here, so I'm going to make it just go down like that. That's perfect. Now we're going to leave well enough alone. And we're going to start to go in now and create the green. The green's on the side of this road. And we know that ultramarine blue and yellow make a really nice green. So that's what I'm mixing right now and put a little white in there. And we're going to just start working away like this. And I want to think too, you know, I, oh, look at the beautiful color in there. One side of the brush had more blue, one side of the brush had more green. So we're just going to go in and just paint this whole thing in just very quickly. And we're just going to go right down here. This time I'm going to use a little yellow okra with a little Cerulean, see what that looks like. Oh, 
Oh, I like the ultramarine a lot too. So we'll put some of that in there. And then we're gonna put some of that up in here. We need a little lighter. You know, remember what I said, it's either a little lighter, a little darker, a little cooler, or a little warmer. But we're always thinking, you know, thinking, is it to this, is it to that? And then, this was a wonderful little village. And it had been there for, you know, gosh, hundreds of years. So, I'm sure they had this at the top of the hill because it was protected and they could see from far away if anyone was going to approach. Now, this particular place had, there was some kind of a, uh, some kind of an embankment, a building or something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a nice shape. And that's what I'm interested in because today I feel like a shape maker. So we're going to go here and we're going to, well, we, we know the church is going to be about there, and this building here started, it went across like that. And for some reason, it was in tears. So that would be the first one. And then the second one went up like this. And we've got the whole background in there painted, so I can go right on top, which I love doing that that way because we don't have to worry about having halos around everything and having to paint around. I'd much rather paint over than around. And then we go up to the next area and we're, uh, the clouds are behind there, but we're losing them. So that's fine too. And this goes up here. And then there actually, there were about more sections than that, but for our purposes, we're just gonna leave it like this. Now, the next thing we wanna do is, we wanna have some darks in here. And there was a wonderful big tree that was right here on the side. And before we get in there though, I just want to take, knock out some of this white. And you know, I suddenly see that bright yellow and I think, you know, wouldn't red be a little fun in there? Let's just have a little variety of color. Makes it exciting. And now we're gonna put this incredible tree in here. And I don't have to worry about that because right here where the blue shows through, because I know I'm putting a tree up in there. And I want this to be a little straighter edge here. Okay, now we're gonna take the big brush. This, here's the big brush again, and we're going to go in with a dark tree. We've got the blue, and maybe we'll put a little red in there. And we'll put a little yellow. And we're gonna start this dancing tree. And oh, it was so beautiful. This tree was on the side of the road and it was just setting off, pushing everything back. We know when we come up, you know, we want it up close. We make it bigger and darker and more detailed. So first of all, it's gonna be big and that's what we're working on right now. And we want it dark too because we want it to set it off from what's going on behind it. Now, the way we get really good dark is we use the brown, we use the blue, and we use the red, and that makes it really super dark. These are all these tricks. Alizarin is a great color, which you're not using today to make things very dark. Now I'm thinking here, I'm a shape maker, so I'm thinking about shapes. And here we go. These trees are coming out, these branches. And I wanted, I want some to go out, and we know when they come down toward the bottom that they're getting lower. So these, these branches up here are up higher. And then what we have here is a little lower down here. We have shadows, we have branches. And I'll tell you what we're gonna do here too. On the bottom here, we're going to have a little shadows that are coming across the road here. So we're gonna have the shadows coming across like this, just to break up the space a bit. And then we're gonna have to have this darker coming out here. Now we better get to this church because we're kind of working away here. We've got some things we wanna accomplish in this painting. Oh, this is fun. It's really fun, and there are all these little things we want to do here. The road as it comes down does that. Now, 
the church, we get our T-square. And it still looks a little wet in there to me. So I'm going to take my little tissue here and just knock that out. And we're going to go right for the church here. And we drop the T-square, and we think that's a good spot for the church. So we go, and we're, it's going to be, we're using yellow ochre now. And we're going to take it right from here down to there. Now what I've got is this wonderful little brush. And we're going to paint in this church up here. We're going to go like this. And there we have, I really have to kind of focus here. Then after we paint that part out there, it's, we've got it on the angle. We go up here and we are going to do this part of the church here. And let's make it a little bit higher. You know, churches are rising up. They're reaching up to heaven. And then we have this here on the top. And then... We're going to, on this side, it's a lot, it's a little bit darker because the light's coming from over here. So we'll make this just a touch darker here. And underneath here, it's going to be dark. And I'm going to use my special little brush here. And this is my little rigger, but it's great for doing details. So we're going to have this go under here like that. And some, on this particular church, there were little figurines going up here, little sculptures. And then we had right here, there was a window here and a window here. And there was some kind of a, a little, I guess a little porch or something going here. So we, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. But we're just saying that we want to have, you know, a little description of what's going on here. Now I'm going to go back to my T-square and because I really do like it straight. And we're just going to make a little line here like that. And we'll make little lines here. This is how it looked. And there was a little tiny cross at the top. And that's just exactly what we want. Now, we had these incredible trees, these poplar trees that also give you this uplift that the church did. You know, we're going up to the church, up to heaven. And we had three trees and one. Now, I need a lot of pigment here. We're going to have a mama, papa, and a baby tree. Here's going to be the, that is going to be the papa tree. And it was rising up. And then there was another one here. And I think I want to change the color a bit here. Just make it a little different color. Just because we want variety and variety is the spice of life. And then here's another one that was going right up. Though I can, we just have to go and decide where we want it to go. What about right there? And you can see it's all wet and we want to have the shadows going across here. And this will have some shadows going down there. And then I think it would be really fun to have some figures in here too. So what we're going to do for the figures is, and you know something, you see the red we have down here? Just for the fun of it, let's put some red up in here. We don't know why we're putting red up in there, except it's design-wise we think it would be fun to have some red. So we'll put a little red up in here. Just, just because we've got red below, now we've got red above, and we'll have a little line going here. Now, this is where you've got to get careful. Sometimes you think, no more, and that's when you've got to listen. Do not tease the painting to death. It's like going in, going out. Now, we're going to put a couple of little figures in here. And here's my little rigger brush. And I think this would be a good placement for them right here. One figure right here. And we're just making this pretty simple. Maybe we'll make three figures, actually. Maybe we'll have two adults and a child. We'll make another figure here. Let's put a little red in here just for the fun of it. These are really simple little figures. We haven't put the heads on yet. And then in the middle, we'll have one, a little, a little child. Why not? They're all walking up the hill together. And... Uh, now we're going to put in their heads, which we always put in last, as you know, 
because I know how big these are going to be now. There's another head, and we're going to make these a little longer. Oh, look how great that is. You just get the ceiling, and they're going up the hill, and they're having a lovely time. So here we go. Little shadows going across here, and maybe they're holding hands. We have the little one going there. And let's see what we want here. I think it's looking pretty good. I'm really pleased with it, but we're going to put a few little details in here now. Um, I see one little thing here. I don't, not quite so sure about the, that line there, but in order to bring this forward, what we're going to do is we're going to just hit it with some little details. And this is the dancing rigger brush. And it just makes it fun. And we're going to put a little bit of a trunk in there. And this is pretty thick, so I'm going to water it down a bit. And I think we've just about wrapped it up for today. And I just had such a good time. Of course, I have to do one last thing. I don't like that tree. I have to do that to it. And we'll have this one going right off the top. Why not? And we're ready. Are you, I'm going to sign this. I had such a wonderful time painting with you all today. And you know, there's no right or wrong way to paint. The whole thing is to paint. You've got your own style. You've got your own ideas. But whatever it is, do it. Now, we're going to make just sign my name here. And I'm so happy that you joined me today. If you have half as much fun looking at the show as I do painting, I know you will have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. For more inspiration and to order DVDs, please visit MimiSamus.com. Funding for Love to Paint with Mimi was provided by Agnes Gund. Utrecht Art Supplies, celebrating 60 years. And by Kelly and Robert Day. Additional funding was provided by the following.